Hello everybody, this is a tutorial that should hopefully show you guys how to defend a little bit better by the end of the game. Now keep in mind that this is not one of these games where I'm really, really trying to win. My enemy knows that he's supposed to keep trying to rush me, and I know that I'm supposed to be trying to defend. What you're supposed to do in most Bloons Tower Defense Battles games is you're supposed to try and survive long enough where you can find an opening in your enemy's defense and exploit it. But sometimes exploiting those defenses can be tough and you have to go into the late game and you want to make sure you have enough economy to survive till the end of the game and to make sure you have enough money to rush them by the end of the game. So this video is being played on a reasonable map. It's not super hard, it's not super easy. I think it's on the, the harder end of the spectrum to survive. But uh, one other thing I just have to make sure you guys understand is that there's not one strategy that you can use where it's just going to, bam, you're going to survive every single level. There's levels like Hydro Dam, and there's uh, really weird things that could possibly happen to you, or lag or something like that, that can make the game a little bit harder to survive. So that's just a quick little spoiler there. Don't get mad at me if you can't do this every single time. Um, obviously, things change based on the maps and based on what's going on. And if the enemy does rush you with a really, really giant mega rush for whatever reason, you have to, again, play your enemy. Don't play the map. Or don't just play the game. Play your enemy. Your enemy can, if he has billions of dollars saved up by level 10, he sends out a massive regrow pink rush or something. It can be pretty different than if... Uh, you notice that he's spending money on a bunch of towers the entire time and spending money on farms and things like that. So basically, again, what I'm doing is I'm trying to survive here. So I think key to most strategies is try and use some sort of cannon. I mean, cannons are pretty darn, pretty darn effective. And also keep in mind that defending a rush does not mean losing zero lives. It means doing the best you can while still getting economy, which is going to allow you to get into late game. Now, I don't recommend just, if you're trying to defend, go with... Uh, Losing lots of lives in the very beginning and just not caring about lives at all. Of course, care about your lives a little bit, but don't feel too pressed to uh, go no lives lost or just lose, like, one life. Oh, no, we can only lose one life or something like that. For example, I already lost 11. No big deal whatsoever. I got a bunch of economy here. I've gotten blue balloon. I've gotten a bunch of blue balloons around here, and I've already up to 416 in-game economy, which is pretty darn fantastic. And on top of that, which I don't normally show you guys that often, but I think is a very, very good strategy to use, is mixing in between farms and balloon economy. I think starting off balloon economy gets you a really good start to the game, and then you can mix in here and start going farms. Uh, level 5, 6, 7, 8, those are all pretty darn long levels, so you can actually get a lot of in-game economy out of this. So again, uh, I have four towers that I'm using today. I have a cannon, I have a tax shooter, I have my uh, farms up there, and also a camera detection tower, such as a mortar. Uh, you can switch off, you can go with a couple different types of uh, towers, of course. Uh, you guys have probably watched my videos, you guys know camera detection, you need a monkey village, you need a mortar, anything else, you're going to be weak. You basically can't be fantastic with any sort of other camo detection towers, besides maybe a monkey ace on certain levels. But... Uh, Again, just get just enough to survive. You do. You want just enough to survive, and that's probably the biggest problem that a lot of newer players have, is they don't know exactly what just enough is. Uh, for example, I have just enough black popping power, and then I have my cannon for basically all the rest of my popping power in here, but you're probably not going to just be able to survive with just one tax shooter the entire time. You're probably going to have to mix in some other things. For example, if he tries to rush me with regrow yellows right now, the cannon is probably going to defend them, but regrow yellows and regrow blacks combined, especially these guys right here, I probably can't defend them quite as fantastically. So I definitely have to get my cannon up, and if possible, try and uh, get to your cannon upgraded a little bit more, or even get another tax shooter over there. Another texture would help me out a little bit. Now, I'm down about 50 lives right now. So if he sent out a giant gi super mega rush against me, I could have easily sold a farm, get my texture up, and be totally fine, not lose any lives. He wasted as much of money on that stuff. I didn't really waste too much money because I sold my farm and I lost like 200 or 300 or 400 bucks. Really not too big of a deal. So now what I've decided to do is get ready for a little bit more... Uh, defense over here. I've gotten my tax shooters up, and now you have to start getting ready for the hard part of the game. The hard part of the game is in between rounds 12 and 17. I think that's the hardest part of the game to make sure you're going to survive through those levels. Most people lose on those levels. Most people don't have enough camo detection, or most people don't have enough camo, uh, or I mean regrow popping power. So we're going to make sure we have enough of that stuff. And one of the best ways is, honestly, a ring of fire. Most levels, you can usually use a ring of fire very, very effectively. So get ready to use those guys. You don't really need it on level 12, but by level 13, you should have it, for sure. Uh, you can't survive on just one sole ring of fire. If they send out enough of those rebel balloons, they will get overwhelmed. So what I do recommend doing is getting a 3-0 cannon. Make sure you have a mortar as well, and maybe another tax shooter or another cannon or something like that. So this guy went for sort of a weird rush here. He went with a... 
regrow blacks. And honestly, that would have been pretty darn effective if I didn't have a ring of fire getting ready to be built, because my cannon would have uh, made them all into regrow blacks, and um, uh, maybe the textures wouldn't have done enough black popping power, and they could regrow back into uh, leads again, and you know, just keep regrowing and regrowing and multiplying because of that cannon. So the only thing that I can assume is he's trying to save up for a big rush for level 15. Now usually there's big rushes on 8, there's big rushes on 13, big rushes on 15. But sometimes the biggest rush ever can be on 15 for sure. Because you can send out a mixture of regrow ceramics and regrow rainbows. So right here you guys are going to see a gigantic, mega, huge rush. you got to make sure you prepare for those. Even if you have to sell a farm or something like that to make sure you have enough defense, get it guys. <clears throat> So here is the ceramics. Now ceramics, the best way to, to pop ceramics is to make sure you have a lot of itty bitty popping power and combine with something that has a lot of popping power. For example, a ring of fire isn't that great versus a ceramic balloon. In fact, a 3-0 tax shooter is better versus popping the ceramic layer of the balloon. So that's why they're better because it keeps it, it shoots out more little uh, projectiles to pop it instead of just a one ring of fire that can attack 70 balloons all in one shot. So now we're just going to jump here into round 18. I already got my defense set up. I got uh, my farms all over there. I got five farms by now, uh, which, it, like I said, you have to keep increasing your economy throughout the game. Plan on surviving into the late game if you want to play this type of game. If you are planning on this and you can't exploit your enemy's defense, keep getting your economy. Don't just survive. Prepare. Prepare for the later game. You can tell he's got a pretty solid defense over here. He's got a bunch of boomerangs, got his motors up, got his uh, uh, cannons down there as well, his uh, uh, Moab maulers. So he's got a pretty solid defense as well. So if we can't explode it yet, we just have to survive. And we have to make sure we have more economy than him. So this is the point in the game where you can go two ways about it. You can either say, you know what, I think I'm going to try and beat him pretty darn soon. Or I think I'm going to go into very late game where I need to get a lot of in-game economy because farms get less good the farther you get into the game. So hopefully this is a helpful tutorial in trying to show you guys the game just a little bit in a, a different way, a defensive point of view instead of a totally offensive t point of view. Normally I tell you guys, offense, offense, offense. Rush people, rush people, rush people, make sure you have a little bit of defense here and there. No, we're trying to go with make sure you have a fantastic defense, get a little bit of economy along the way, and try and make sure you survive. It's a different way that we can play the game. So also make sure that you have more than one mortar by this point because of something called a mortar exploit. A mortar exploit is something that happens very, very often for uh, anybody who's played the game for quite a while. What you do is you send a bunch of uh, moabs, and then you send some camo balloons underneath those moab balloons, and basically your mortar's pop limit hits the balloons that are popping out of the moabs before they hit the camo balloons that come underneath them. So basically, the camo balloons sneak right through, and because you don't have any camo popping power besides those mortars, they just sneak right through and run through the other side of the map. And now if you do that with uh, ceramic balloons or something like that, you can do 100 lives of damage pretty darn fast. Uh, it's a little bit tougher with camo pinks, but you can get you can get them through easier, but you can't kill them quite as easy, especially if it's 100 150 lives or something like that. So I've got a really solid defense. I've got five Moab Maulers up here. I've got a 4-2 cannon. i got two Ring of Fires. I've got my camo detection up there. How could this guy possibly beat me? Even with a gigantic regrow BFB rush, I honestly don't think he could have. Be he can beat me. So he understands that in this game. He understands that he can't beat me, so he's just trying to survive longer and longer and longer. And even if he tries to go for a mortar exploit, he might leak. I might leak a couple balloons. But I'm not going to lose the game. I'm not going to lose the game because of a couple pinks. And he's going to waste a lot of money trying to send out those Moabs and then send out those camo pinks underneath them. So really just not worth it for him. So he's finally going with a weird tower over here. He's going with a super monkey. You don't really see those super monkeys too often. Uh, usually if someone's trying to go for a super monkey, they're trying to get a technological terror or something like that. Um, maybe we'll see that in the late game. So he might have an advantage over me in the late game. So we're going to have to kill him pretty darn soon here, guys. So I sold on my farms, and I said, you know what? Gigantic BFB rush with a camo exploit. We're going to see if we can camo or camo balloon exploit his mortars. Even though it's going to be tough, maybe the regrow balloons can actually just kill him alone because he does not have that much popping power. Balloon popping power. So basically, we found the exploit. He didn't have enough balloon popping power. BFB, Super Mega Rush, that's the end of the game. As always, please press that little like button if this helped you out, and uh, have a great day.